Chapter 40 After hanging up the phone, Xing Shui held the phone with one hand and scratched her hair with the other. Although she kept telling herself not to be cowardly or cowardly, it would be easy to reveal her secrets, but when she saw Shi Yan from the corner of her eye, she was frightened. That, Xing Shui hesitated to speak, thinking about how to phrase it. Usually eloquent, the train in his mouth can run to the top of the Himalayas, but now he can't utter a word for a long time. Busy, Shi Yan said suddenly. Ah, that's right. Xing Shui nodded, my friend invited me to soak in the hot springs today. She scratched the hair on her forehead again, well, I didn't know you would come here today. Shi Yan didn't answer immediately, and after scanning her face inch by inch, he quickly withdrew his gaze, looked straight ahead, and didn't speak. Xing Shui rolled his eyes around, not knowing where to look for a moment. Then what, what about our house, the night view is very famous, you can go and see it if you have a chance. Oh, yes, the grouper here is also very special, you have a chance to try it. There were also some confusing words, but she couldn't say them anymore, because Shi Yan's eyes fell on hers, as if he had seen through the logic behind her behavior. Are you avoiding me? Really? You are so resourceful. Xing Shui swallowed. Why, how could it be? You come to my house to play, I'm too happy to be happy, how could I hide from you? It's just that I did have an appointment with a friend today. After finishing speaking, she carefully observed Shi Yan's expression. From the looks of it, her argument didn't seem very convincing. Really, Shi Yan smiled. But in the eyes of Xing Shui at this moment, even if he smiled, he looked a little perverted. You're not going on a blind date, are you? Xing Shui. No, no, she shook her head crazily like a conditioned reflex. Why do I have a blind date? Am I in a hurry? Shi Yan nodded. Without saying a word, he unbuttoned his neckline. If a woman's heart is a needle in the sea, then Jing Shui's heart may be a paramecium in the vast ocean. Last night, she spoke sweet words one after another, as if she didn't want money, her voice was sweet and soft, just like this person standing in front of her. Shi Yan didn't know if it was because she drank at night, through the phone, she always felt that every word she said was scratching people. After hanging up the phone, he blew the wind by the window for a while, but still this morning, set off for the city. However, when he appeared, the woman in front of him was like a frightened bird, she retracted into her shell when touched. It seems that in this city, she has some ulterior secrets. The silence on Shi Yan's side directly caused Xing Shui's small theater to perform 800 times, and even thought out his own lines for going to the guillotine. I don't know if he believes it or not, and I dare not ask again. My mind is still in a mess, so I don't have the time to care what Shi Yan is thinking. For a long time, Shi Yan suppressed the restlessness in his heart, put his arm on the car window, and didn't give Xing Shui a look. His voice became colder by two degrees. Where to get off? Xing Shui immediately replied, It's fine here. As soon as the words fell, even the driver coughed violently. He just felt that there seemed to be some man-eating monster in the car, and the girl wanted to slip away as if her ass was on fire. Naturally, Shi Yan's complexion couldn't look any better. He looked in the rearview mirror with emotion in his eyes. After a while, he spoke. Whatever. The fourth day of the Lunar New Year is the day to welcome the God of Wealth. Instead of visiting relatives today, Wang Meru invited a few friends to come over for a table of mahjong, and there were two children watching cartoons in the living room. The laughter from the TV and the sound of mahjong complement each other, creating a joyful atmosphere. So when Jing Shui came back, no one noticed her. She didn't say a word, and walked straight to the room. It wasn't until the door was opened that Wang Meru turned around and said, Are you back? Xing Shui didn't respond, but nodded, and locked the door behind him. The liveliness of the living room has nothing to do with Xing Shui. She kicked off her shoes, fell down on the bed, and stared at the ceiling. The closed and quiet room gave her an environment to sort out her thoughts, and the scenes in her memories played back before her eyes like a revolving lantern. Half an hour later, Xing Shui understood for the first time what it means to keep cutting and straighten things out. She sat up cross-legged, brushed her hair, and immediately made a voice call to buy Ruishan. It took a long time to pick up over there. What are you doing? I'm playing Mahjong. Stop hitting, chat with me for a while. Let's talk about it tonight, I'm waiting for a comeback. I overturned. Haha, <laughs> what overturned the car? Bai Ruishan said with a smile, you lost money too. Your sister, I'm flirting and overturned. There was silence on the other end of the phone for two seconds. Then there was the sound of chairs being pushed and pulled and hurried footsteps. Okay, there's no one here, tell me, what kind of flirt overturned? Xing Shui took a deep breath, 
and told by Ruishan what happened today with a blank expression. However, what she got was wild laughter that lasted half a minute. By Ruishan even burst into tears from laughter. Isn't it, sister? Are you kidding me? Is it true or not? I don't write novels, what story should I make up? Zhang Shui fell on the bed, in a state of abandonment, don't laugh, I think I might die. Bai Ruishan was silent for a while, escaped from the absurd shock, thought about the matter carefully, and fell into the same emotion as Zhang Shui. It's kind of like that. I understand you now. After all, he is not an ordinary person, and his status and status are there. If he finds out about it, you will have no good fruit to eat. The more Bai Ruishan talked, the more she felt that this matter was embarrassing, men are all good-faced, let alone a man like him. If he is generous, it's fine, but at worst, he will never communicate with each other. If he is a little narrow-minded, then you will lose your job. It's a trivial matter, it's just a matter of one sentence, when someone directly makes you unable to get along in this circle, I'm not scaring you, I've seen such a person. Zhang Shui still looked at the ceiling without saying a word. Are you scared? Of course I was afraid. But besides fear, she has many other emotions now, and it is difficult to express it with just one adjective. After a while, Bai Ruishan said to herself for a long time without waiting for a response, and suddenly asked, Hey, are you listening to me? Yes. Zhang Shui sighed, I'm looking at my chat history with him. The more I watched, the more frightened I became. Now she pulls out her role, and then reads the disgusting things she said. What evil has she done? The other end of the phone was quiet for a long time, Bai Ruishan thought of something, and said with a smile, why, sinking into memory and unable to extricate yourself. Memory kill. Zhang Shui's mouth froze, this is a werewolf kill. Bai Ruishan laughed again for a while, sister, wipe away your tears and listen to me. Zhang Shui, hmm. I think, God knows this, you know it, I know it, since no third person knows, wait, does anyone else know? Zhang Shui thought for a while, there really are. Who? I'm an intern, and I told her about it, but I didn't say who it was. Oh, that's okay. By Ruishan, he a sigh of relief, your intern has nothing to do with Shi Yen, it's okay. She cleared her throat, and continued, then what I mean is, since Shi Yen has no chance to know the truth, you simply follow the plan. Zhang Shui. No, your idea. My idea is to have the best of both worlds. By Ruishan said, I told you a long time ago, even if you don't want anything else, it's not a loss to fall in love with this person alone, right? Not only is it not a loss, sister, you have made a lot of money okay. Zhang Shui's eyes moved slightly, and he slowly sat up straight. Let's do this, E, tell me, aside from other factors, do you like him as a person? I'm thinking that there is no reason for you not to be moved by such a man in front of you. Do I like him? Zhang Shui remembered that time in the elevator. His superficial kiss directly caused her to be fascinated for a long time. She was in a daze and muttered to herself, I don't know. Oh, that's not important. Bai Ruishan was impatient, it's fine if he likes you. Now you just hypnotize yourself, pretend it's nothing, follow the current rhythm, wouldn't it be nice to have a relationship with him? Zhang Shui didn't speak, and grabbed his hair vigorously. I know that this hurdle in my heart is a bit difficult to overcome, but this is the best way at the moment. You should think about it carefully. Oh, let's not talk about it. My poker friend is urging me, and I have to go back to the battlefield. A busy tone rang on the phone, but Zhang Shui held the phone in his hand, and slowly did not move. It wasn't until Qin Shuiwa called that Zhang Shui was brought back to the real world. Sister Shui, I'm at the Hot Spring Hotel, come here, I've already opened the room. Oh, by the way, remember to bring your swimsuit. In fact, Qin Shuiwa was supposed to treat guests well at home today, but it was the same group of guests on the fourth day of the first lunar month. A double torment of body and mind. However, she just got up this morning, standing on the stairs, listening to Shi Yen and her mother talking there, as if she was going to Qingyan City for something. Qin Shiriwa yawned, and the famous hot spring hotel in Qingyan City appeared in his mind, so he didn't care about other things, so he came here to accompany the banquet. But Qin Shiriwa was not in the habit of asking what Shi Yen was going to do, so he followed Shi Yen to Qingyan in a well-behaved manner. When I checked in at the hotel, I suddenly remembered, isn't this Xing Shui's hometown? That moment. Qin Shiriwa had no logic, no reasoning, just based on the circle of friends that he liked late at night, he felt that things were not that simple. Therefore, she felt that Shi Yen probably came to see Xing Shui. 
Otherwise, what can happen on the fourth day of the Lunar New Year, who doesn't stay at home to welcome the God of Wealth? So she cautiously and tentatively asked, Uncle, did you come to Qingyan to meet some friends? Sure Yen let out an um and seemed to be in a good mood. This gave Qin Shiriwe some more courage, causing her to ask, Is it? Xiong Shui. As if some sensitivity had been touched, Sure Yan's brows twitched, and he looked sideways at Qin Shiriwe, but didn't speak. That's not denial. This no. Able enough. Ah, Xiong Shui, she belongs to herself. Qin Shiriwe's mentality almost collapsed. So not long after Shi Yan left, Qin Shiriwe called Jing Shui and asked her to take a hot spring to find out if Shi Yan was with her. The answer is obvious. The two were not together, otherwise how could Jing Shui agree to her so readily? But Qin Shiriwe's brain usually doesn't have much use, it has accumulated a lot of fertile ground. Once some imagination is generated based on a certain gossip, it will quickly take root and grow into a towering tree. But seeing Jing Shui himself, Qin Shiriwe was a little surprised. You don't look well. Jing Shui nodded listlessly and said vaguely, busy during Chinese New Year. Qin Shiriwe gave her a very understanding look. It's the same. At our age, we can't play around like children, and we can't talk to the elders. We just sit and meditate. While talking, she led Jing Shui to the hot spring area in the back mountain of the hotel. Qingyan Hot Spring is famous far and wide and there is an endless stream of guests. Qin Shiriwe also didn't want to bathe with other people, so she spent money to open a private hot spring. It was located on the mountainside, and the half-moon-shaped pool was surrounded by a bamboo fence. It was far away from other hot springs, and no human voice could be heard. An experience at noon seemed to drain all of Jing Shui's energy. When she was lying on the edge of the pool, she let the waves rippling on her body, which didn't arouse her interest at all and there was still a mess in her mind that couldn't be solved. Fortunately, hot springs have a calming effect. Jean Wuxi fell, and it was almost dusk. When she got up from the hot spring for the last time, Xing Shui's mood had calmed down a lot, and she was in the mood to joke with Qin Shiriwe. In the bathroom, through the screen, Qin Shiriwe wiped her body and said, By the way, how was your blind date? Xing Shui, that's it, we both came out to perfuse our parents. Oh, relying on the fact that Jing Shui couldn't see her expression, Qin Shiriwe wanted to inquire about gossip, so she stretched out her ears and asked, Then what about you, the one you chased after, eh, how's it going? Similarly, Qin Shiriwe couldn't see Jing Shui's violently collapsed expression at the moment, only heard her say hoarsely, No, no more. Stop chasing. Forget it, it's too difficult. Qin Shiriwe was right. It is said that women chase men, but it also depends on what kind of man they are chasing. If it was a man like her little uncle, then there would be a layer of gauze, covered with shock nets. Speaking of little uncle, Qin Shiriwe was suddenly blessed to his heart. Don't be sad, or if I introduce my little uncle to you, he will definitely be more handsome and rich than that little uncle's little uncle. But when Jing Shui heard the word little uncle, Tian Ling Gai, who had finally calmed down, began to feel numb again. No, no, I don't want to know any little uncle. M. Although Jing Shui refused outright, Qin Shiriwe wanted to explore the relationship between her uncle and Jing Shui. It is definitely not daring to test her directly, but she has 180 indirect methods. For example, she took Jing Shui to take a group photo and then send it to the family group. Come to the hot spring with your good friends. All the relatives were frothing, but Shi Yan didn't. This made Qin Shiriwe scratch his head even more. The power of snooping and gossip was so strong that she stretched out her foot, opened Shi Yan's chat box, and frantically tried on the verge of being cut off from her source of income. Qin Shiriwe, Sister Shui's feelings are frustrated, and she took advantage of this good opportunity. Qin Shiriwe, if you hesitate, you will lose, and if you are decisive, you will be given in vain. After posting here, she immediately and naturally connected to Jing Shui's topic. Is it really not necessary? My little uncle is very good. Jing Shui quickly shook his head like a rattle, but Qin Shiriwe still promoted her little uncle like a pyramid schemer. Until the two walked to the hotel lobby. Under the bright lights, Shi Yan came striding forward. There were people coming and going around, he was dressed in a crisp suit, just like the first time I saw him, the gold-rimmed glasses were decorated with flashes of light, and the eyes behind the lenses were looking straight at Jing Shui. An invisible sense of oppression instantly surrounded Jing Shui. Why, just fucking, so, so coincidentally. Jing Shui petrified there, all the strings in his mind were tensed. 
She watched Shi Yan walk towards them helplessly. Then, Qin Shi Yue called out Little Uncle with a smile, and Shi Yan responded with a soft um. Um, uncle, uncle, and then. Xing Shui saw Shi Yan and turned to look at her. What frustrated you emotionally? M. At that moment, Jing Shui heard the sound of heaven and earth ripping apart tens of thousands of strings in his head. Chapter 41 I what setbacks my feelings? Jing Shui hadn't recovered from the shock brought to her by Qin Shi Yue's little uncle, and was stunned by Shi Yan's words. She froze, blinked her eyes, her face full of confusion. Qin Shi Yue covered her forehead from the side, and didn't even look at her little uncle. The heart said that I told you the situation to let you take advantage of the situation, not to tell you to play the straight ball like this. What kind of setbacks have you suffered in your relationship? Is that the point? Straight man. Under heavy pressure, Qin Shiriwe decided to shoulder the responsibility and stand up to break the rigid situation. She used her thumb and forefinger to pinch out a fingernail-sized piece, and said, Uncle, I was chatting with Sister Shui, she just suffered a little setback, it's not. Zheng Shui. It turned out to be like this. Qin Shiriwe's sister really, can't do anything, digging a hole, for her, is really a world-class champion. However, Qin Shiriwe didn't break the scene, and her own explanation was interrupted. Shi Yan completely ignored her desire to lighten the atmosphere, and didn't even look at her. His gaze fell directly on Jing Shui, and he said, go back to your room. This sentence was naturally addressed to Qin Shi Wei. Instead, it made the atmosphere even more tense. Although Qin Shi Wei didn't understand why Shi Yan's sentence, what's your emotional setback, would make her feel a sense of tension that was approaching a sword. But she knew she couldn't stay here any longer. Oh, then I'll go back first. After finishing speaking, none of the two of them gave her a look, and they were still immersed in the subtle tension. It seemed that there was an invisible fuse between the two, and whoever reached out and flicked it would instantly ignite the air. After recognizing the situation clearly, Qin Shiriwa fled with a whimper. But before entering the elevator, she couldn't help turning her head, and happened to see Shi Yan holding Jing Shui's hand and walking towards the corridor. The promenade of the hotel is built around the mountains, with no walls in the open air, gurgling water on the side, and exquisite wooden street lamps hanging above the head. In such an elegant environment, Shi Yan was very impatient, ignoring Jing Shui's struggle, and coldly pulled her towards the end of the corridor. Jing Shui felt like his wrist was about to break. This was secondary, mainly because she didn't know what storm she was going to face next. If it wasn't for the customers coming and going in the corridor, she would have just lingered regardless of her image. But with Shi Yan's strength at the moment, Jing Shui couldn't help but bluff, and even had to trot and stagger all the way to keep up with his footsteps. At the end of the corridor is the Hot Spring Hotel's own bar. Just after dusk, the ambiguous lights in the bar flickered. Only sporadic guests sat and chatted in low voices, and the bartender quietly wiped the glasses at the bar. Shi Yan strode in, picked a sofa at random, and pulled Jing Shui in front of him. Just as Jing Shui breathed a sigh of relief, someone pushed his shoulders, thumped, and sat down in the corner of the sofa. Immediately afterwards, Shi Yan stepped in, kicked off the table, and sat down in front of her. Jing Shui subconsciously wanted to stand up, and he immediately stretched out one leg, straddling Jing Shui's face. His movements did not conform to his usual gentle image, but effectively formed a closed circle, blocking her way to hide. Shi Yan bent his elbow, leaned against the back of the sofa and raised his chin towards Xing Shui. Come on, now you can tell me how I frustrate you. Xing Shui. After a while, Xing Shui figured out the current situation with his remaining rationality. Qin Shi Yue said that she was frustrated emotionally, and Shi Yan naturally understood that she was frustrated with him. That, if she said she was frustrated by others, she might have to walk out of this hotel sideways. Xing Shui clenched his fists, trying to drag Qin Shi Yue out for a fight. After a while, Jing Shui's thin and cowardly voice sounded, it's, it's not a big deal. Didn't I misunderstand that you fell in love with Qin Shi Yue before? I feel bad, and today I know that you are with her wake up Qin Yin, I, I feel bad. As Jing Shui talked, he really got into the drama, looking like weeping. Who cares, the fifteenth thing will be solved on the fifteenth, and we will talk about it after living through the first day of junior high school. But when she looked up, she saw Shi Yan's expression of watching her performance, obviously not believing it at all. Now that I know that you are relatives, if I told you earlier, I wouldn't think so much. Xing Shui put away that expression and said with a dry smile, I'm fine now, my setbacks are gone. 
After speaking, she nervously waited for Shi Yan's response. However, Shi Yan just looked at her quietly. The hazy table lamp reflected a gentle warm yellow, lying between the eyes of the two, like a calm spring, carrying Shi Yan's emotional eyes. It's not that he couldn't see Jing Shui's strangeness, and he wouldn't believe what he said, but, sometimes he really has nothing to do with Xing Shui. Xiao Jiu Jiu, who knew she was full of brains, always compromised again and again. Anyway, no matter what she did, it was still within his tolerable range. After a long time, he sighed silently, retracted the legs that were blocking Jing Shui, and leaned closer to her. Jing Shui was so nervous that he tightened his sleeves. Fortunately, Shi Yan just adjusted his posture, changed to a comfortable sitting position, and looked down at Jing Shui. You said it so sincerely, Shi Yan said with a somewhat inauthentic smile, so you like me that much. Jing Shui's fingers trembled slightly. Good question. Good enough to just bury her. I, she was so nervous that her palms were getting hot, and her voice was a little erratic, I am indeed a small-minded person. Don't avoid answering. Shi Yan suddenly raised his hand to support the back of her head, breaking her thoughts of avoiding staring at each other, say, how much you like me. The sound of the music seemed to be drifting far away at this moment, Xing Shui only heard Shi Yan's question. Seeing that she hadn't spoken for a long time, Shi Yan changed his questioning method. He moved closer, lowered his voice, with a hint of bewitching, only Jing Shui could hear, compared with your ex-boyfriend, do you like him more, or do you like me more? What option is this? Can she choose neither? Obviously, she didn't dare. With the last desire to survive, Jing Shui jumped out word by word, of course it's you. After getting this answer, Shi Yan seemed to be pleased, he curled his lips and smiled softly. The palm on the back of Jing Shui's head slid down and brushed her hair. Yeah. He said softly, with Xing Shui's face reflected in his pupils, I believe you this time. Xing Shui's eyes flickered, and then he moved closer. Then when did you only like me, Xing Shui? Xing Shui felt that she was about to suffocate. These are some death questions. Under the extremely tense situation, her face blushed layer by layer, and even her breath slapped Shi Yan's face in disorder. Seeing her like this, Shi Yan slowly let go of her hand, sat up straight, and gave her room to breathe but Jing Shui didn't feel relieved at all. On the contrary, it was Shi Yan's sentence that made her realize more clearly that he is a man with absolute possessive desire. If he finds out, Jing Shui looked up at the street lights outside the window. It's over such a beautiful night scene, I am afraid I will never see it again. Fortunately, at this time, Jing Shui's cell phone rang, she grabbed it out in a panic, and connected it immediately. Shi Yan turned his body sideways, leaving room for her to answer the phone alone. On the other end of the phone is Jing Shui's father. E, are you going home tonight? If you don't go home, your mother and I won't stay in the door. Jing Shui's voice was a little flustered. Come back, I will definitely go back. It's okay, you and your friends can play outside for a while longer. Well, I'll be home right away, don't worry. What? After finishing speaking, Jing Shui immediately hung up the phone and looked at Shi Yan. My dad is here to pick me up, I'm going home. Shi Yan looked at her with great interest and smiled, so good. You have to go home after dark. Jing Shui nodded stiffly. After a while, Shi Yan retracted his legs. Jing Shui stood up and just passed in front of him when he grabbed his wrist. Then why don't you show your kindness to the landlord tomorrow? What? Jing Shui was stunned. Shi Yan looked up at her with direct eyes, you don't know, I came to Qingyan for you, right? M. After Jing Shui left, Shi Yan sat in the bar for a while and ordered a mojito. The number of customers gradually increased, and the bar turned off the music player. The spotlight next to the bar was turned on, and a middle-aged man with a ponytail sat quietly next to the stand microphone with a guitar. There was a bit of noise in the bar, but when his voice sounded, everyone's attention was attracted by him, and they all turned their heads. Look at Malaikayamkrazi. When I shout me feeling sout. Look at Malaikayam different. Still I take kite for something real. The male voice is deep and mellow and the voice with experience sinks the simple lyrics into lingering love. The couple sitting in the bar listened intently to his singing and slowly cuddled together. Amidst the gentle music, Xing Shui's face appeared in Shi Yan's mind. When she acted coquettishly, when she played a rascal, when she was nervous, when she was angry. She always has a lot of emotions, but Shi Yan seems to have never seen her calm and gentle. So I want to bring her here, and I want to hear her whispering in my ear. A song ended in a flash, and the room burst into applause. Shi Yan put down his glass suddenly, got up and walked towards the bar. 
When he left the bar, Tian Tian had just gone dark, but Shi Yan came to Qing'an unprepared and had no other important matters, so he was going back to his room to rest. As soon as he got out of the elevator, he saw the driver, Fan Lei, standing at the door of his room with a hesitant face. He wanted to raise his hand twice to ring the doorbell, but in the end he didn't. Is there something wrong? Shi Yan's sudden noise startled Fan Lei. When he came back to his senses, he said nervously, Mr. Sure, I came here specially to apologize for what happened to my niece. This afternoon, when Jing Shui was going through life and death, he was not idle. After leaving at noon, Qin Lezhi and Yu Xingzhou fell apart and had a big quarrel. They definitely couldn't stay in his house anymore. And she was helpless in Qing'an alone, so she could only cry and call her uncle. It happened that Shi Yan had no plans to travel today, so Fan Lei went to accompany Qin Lezhi to find a hotel to stay. Along the way, Qin Lezhi cried and told him the whole story. Fan Lei didn't want to care about the mess between the few of them, but he knew very clearly that Qin Leji had completely offended Jing Shui. And he drives Shi Yan every day, usually watching his eyes and nose in the driver's seat, but he is very clear about Jing Shui's position in Shi Yan. It would be fine if Shi Yan held grudges against Qin Leji, her family was fairly well to do, even if she lost her job, she could live a good life back home. But Fan Lei was different, he couldn't rely on the Qin family and he didn't have any skills, if Shi Yan got angry and lost this clean and easy job with a good salary, he really didn't know what to do. So after thinking about it, he felt that he still had to make a statement. Shi Yan glanced at his watch and saw that it was still early, so he said, say it. Fan Lei mulled over his words, and said simply, my niece is not sensible, and it has indeed affected the relationship between Ms. Jing and her ex-boyfriend. I have told her about this, and she has already broken up with that man. I will ask her to apologize to Miss Jing for this matter later. Shi Yan interrupted him suddenly, apologize. And let Shui and her ex-boyfriend rekindle their old relationship. Ah. Fan Lei realized that he had said the wrong thing, and immediately shook his head, that's not what I mean, then the old relationship will definitely not rekindle, that ex-boyfriend is too bad, Miss Jing is reigning in the precipice. The focus of Shi Yan has never been consistent with Fan Lei. He nodded and asked, why isn't her ex-boyfriend a thing? In fact, Fan Lei could tell that, like women, as men, ex-boyfriend is also a thorn in the throat. At this time, the most beneficial direction for him is to belittle Yu Xingzhou vigorously, so that the time will be more comfortable and he will be better off. I really love vanity, to the extreme. Fan Lei frowned, as a man, he doesn't want to work hard on his own, he just wants to take a shortcut to reach the sky, thinking that you are. Having said that, he suddenly got stuck. Seems like saying too much. Shi Yan was very displeased with this sudden pause. What do you think? Fan Lei was heartbroken, thinking that speaking out might divert the flames of war. It's just a misunderstanding. He thought you were Lei Lei's uncle, so he dumped Miss Xing and stayed with Lei Lei. After finishing speaking, the person on the opposite side remained silent for a long time. Fan Lei looked like a light on his back. He knows that he is not a smart person and often says the wrong thing, so he tries not to speak when he is working. At this moment, Shi Yan didn't speak a word, and his heart immediately became half cold. It seems that I have misunderstood this trick again. He nervously went to see Shi Yan, and sure enough, he saw that his face was very ugly. Normally, the pair of glasses looked cold and repulsive, but now his gloomy eyes made people shudder even more. So that's how it is. After a long time, Shi Yan said this sentence as if he was talking to himself. Fan Lei was trembling, not knowing whether he should continue talking. He understood. Shi Yan squinted his eyes and said nothing else, go and rest. Fan Lei left, but Shi Yan stood in the corridor for a long time. The leaves were projected onto the wall by the lights, and when the wind blew, the black shadows swayed randomly. Shi Yan knew that his guess at the moment was absurd but just like the shadow on the wall at this time, no matter how messy it was, it was also a real projection, and it did not appear out of thin air. What's more, such an absurd conjecture, on the contrary, matched all the facts. With Jing Shui here, is there any absurd thing she can't do? So she came close to him for that niece, and it was completely something she could do. Thinking of this, Shi Yan suddenly smiled. He thought she wanted money and power, but it turned out not to be. From beginning to end, she just wanted to use him to achieve her own revenge. At this time, behind him was a hotel waiter, pushing a dining car, past Shi Yan. Sir, please make room here. 
Shi Yan turned sideways, his gaze fell on the waiter's face. The waiter was taken aback by the look in his eyes, thinking that he would offend this master by delivering a meal. In the next second, Shi Yan came back to his senses and took out the room card. With a beep, the door opened. Shi Yan didn't go in, he lowered his head and looked at the ground silently. After a while, he turned and walked to another room. At this time, Qin Shiriwe had just made a facial mask and was about to order a supper. When she heard the doorbell, she thought that the hotel had sent something on her own initiative, so she ran to open the door barefoot. Who is it? When she opened the door, she saw Shi Yan standing. Uncle. Shi Yan took a step forward, forcing Qin Shiriwe to retreat again and again. As his niece, Qin Shiriwe has lived with him for so many years and is very sensitive to his emotional changes. For example, at this moment, although Shi Yan didn't speak, Qin Shiriwe could feel the chilly air all around. What happened? Why are you here, Sister Shui, have you left? Holding the door with one hand, Shi Yan stared at Qin Shiriwe for a long time. Shi Yan didn't let out a huh until he saw her startled. Qin Shiriwe took another step back, oh, then what can you do with me? It's nothing. Shi Yan's tone was light and airy, but that posture revealed a sense of oppression. He lowered his head and suppressed Qin Shiriwe with his absolute height advantage, so as to force her to tell the truth, I can't take advantage of it, what should I do? Ah. Uh. Qin Shiriwe's jaw almost dropped in shock. Her little uncle actually admitted to taking advantage of the situation. Would he even say such, embarrassing things to her? How, how is it possible? Qin Shiriwe decided to increase his self-confidence, little uncle, you are so good, there is no one better than you in the whole world, if you work a little harder, it will be easy to catch. Really, Shi Yan squinted at Qin Shiriwe, carefully watching her expression, she has someone in her heart, how can I work hard? What? Qin Shiriwe was stunned for a moment, and it took a while to realize, ah, you said this. She frowned and thought about it, and felt that she really broke her heart for her little uncle, and hoped that he would remember this feeling. She did chase other men before, but don't worry, little uncle, that's not true love, she has other reasons. Didn't she give up, it's your good chance. Yeah. Shi Yan said lightly, it's really like this. Qin Shiriwe nodded again and again, yes, yes, as long as you'd dash. Without saying a word, the door was slammed shut, and Qin Shiriwe's mask almost fell off in fright. What the hell? Qin Shiriwe rubbed her cheek and whispered, did you come to uncle? Outside the door, Shi Yan's cell phone rang along with the sound of closing the door. It was the lobby manager at the bar downstairs. Hello, is this Mr. Sher? I'm the manager of the bar. Let me confirm with you again. Is it reserved from 8 to 2 o'clock tomorrow night? Sir, are you listening, gentlemen? A few seconds later, Shi Yan's calm voice rang through the phone. Welcome to Storyverse. If you have any novels you'd like to see or stories you'd like to share, feel free to leave us a comment or send us a private message. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join our community of avid readers and romance enthusiasts. Chapter 42 Qin Shiriwe is a person who will never treat her badly no matter where she goes, even if the door is slammed by Shi Yan, it will not affect her mood of eating a special hotel suite for supper. She drank white wine, ate oysters, and did all the spa, so even if she watched a movie alone in the room, she felt it was a kind of enjoyment. But the retribution of intemperance always comes unexpectedly. At 2 or 3 o'clock at night, Qin Shiriwe finished watching the movie and was going to sleep, but felt a dull pain in her stomach. Stomach pain from time to time is also an old problem. She didn't care about it and got under the covers after drinking some hot water. However, after tossing and turning on the bed for nearly two hours, the sheets were soaked with sweat. Qin Shiriwe opened her eyes in a daze and took out her phone from under the pillow to check the time. It was 4.45 in the morning. It was the darkest time before dawn and there was no light outside the window. Qin Shiriwe forced herself to close her eyes again but her stomach became more and more uncomfortable, and the pain was magnified infinitely by the night. A few minutes later, Qin Shiriwe forced herself to sit up, after much deliberation, she still called Shi Yan. Unexpectedly, the other party quickly picked it up. Uncle, are you still awake? Shi Yan didn't answer her question. Busy. Qin Shiriwe was exhausted from being tortured, and she didn't have the heart to think about other things. Her weak voice sounded like she was about to die. I have a stomachache. The man on the other end of the phone said impatiently, put on your clothes. Qin Shiriwe didn't hear clearly, huh, what? Get up and get dressed, I'll take you to the hospital. 
After hanging up the phone, Chin Shiriwe had just changed when the doorbell rang. She clutched her stomach and walked over to open the door, and saw that Shi Yan was dressed neatly, but it seemed that she was still wearing the same daytime outfit and hadn't changed. Uncle, are you awake? Shi Yan still didn't answer her question, looked at her pale face, frowned, and said, Can you walk by yourself? Chin Shiriwe drooped her eyelids and nodded, It's okay. Shi Yan looked at her, sighed, turned and squatted down. Come up. The hotel was so quiet late at night that the wind outside could be heard. Chin Shiriwe lay on Shi Yan's back, and only at this close distance could he smell a faint smell of alcohol on Shi Yan's body. Uncle, have you been drinking? With whom? Shi Yan ignored her, only felt his clothes being tightly held by her, and he was gasping for breath. She was in a cold sweat from the pain, but Chin Shiriwe was still thinking that although her uncle usually looked cold, he was actually not a heartless person. Not only that, but those close to him will know that he is simply unprincipled in defending his shortcomings. From the moral high ground, this is definitely not a remarkable quality, but for a woman, it's an entirely irresistible trait. Therefore, no woman can refuse her little uncle, no. Uncle, what do you mean by what you asked today? At this time, Chin Shiriwe did not forget to care about her uncle's lifelong affairs. Nothing, hey, let me tell you, all women are duplicity. Chin Shiryue's voice became weaker and weaker, almost gritting her teeth to hold back the pain while speaking. A man like you, as long as you take the initiative a little, there is no woman those who can resist your charm, I am not smart enough in other areas, but I understand this aspect very well, if you work harder, you have it all in the world. Shut up, oh. When they arrived at the hospital, the doctor on duty checked Chin Shiryue, and it wasn't a big problem. During the spring festival, there have been many gatherings, big and small. Just drinking a lot more wine than usual, and eating some oysters tonight, so this acute gastritis is not unexpected. But after seeing the doctor and knowing that it was just a minor problem, Chin Shiriwe felt much more comfortable in an instant, and even checked Weibo for a while after getting in the car. After tossing in the hospital for a while, when I came out, the sky had already begun to dawn. The branches of the new spring sprouted buds in the early morning mist, and the sanitation workers had already begun to clean the road with a broom. Today should be a sunny day. Chin Shiriwe hiccuped, planning to go back to Chingin's landmark Central Park after going back to catch up on sleep. Thinking of this, she wanted to ask about Shi Yan's arrangements. When I turned my head, I saw him leaning on the back chair with his eyes closed, as calm as if he had fallen asleep. But Chin Shiriwe knew that he hadn't slept, and he didn't seem to be in a good mood. Being tossed into the hospital in the middle of the night, no one would be in a good mood, so Chin Shiriwe shut up knowingly. After a long time, when Chin Shiriwe was also drowsy, the person beside him suddenly spoke. Go back and pack up, let's go home. Ah, Chin Shiriwe woke up suddenly, you just came yesterday, why did you go home? Shir Yen slowly opened his eyes, took off his glasses, and rubbed his eyebrows. You are sick. Actually, I. Chin Shiriwe rubbed his stomach, it's okay. Her gastritis is an old problem, it comes and goes quickly, as long as she takes medicine and rests for a while, she can recover. Kushiryan's tone cannot be questioned. Chin Shiriwe wrinkled his face at the thought of going back to work when he couldn't do anything at home, and looked out the window dejectedly. Hey, it feels like the few days of vacation have passed so quickly, and I have to go back to work again. Shiryan, then you don't want to go. Upon hearing Shi Yan's cold voice, Chin Shiriwe immediately denied, No, no, I don't want to go. I love work. Work has taught me a lot and made me grow. Shi Yan put on his glasses and chuckled softly, which made Chin Shiriwe tremble again. Don't go if you don't want to go, stay at home to recuperate. When he said this, Chin Shiriwe immediately felt that it was worth getting stomach cancer. Well, uncle, you're right. I'm really not in good health recently, so I need to take good care of it. In the early morning, Wang Meru went to the supermarket early to grab the freshest vegetables, and it was less than 9 o'clock when she got home. She habitually knocked on the door of Jing Shui's room, but there was no movement inside, so she pushed it open. The sun is on my butt and I still don't get up. After the words fell, Jing Shui was seen sitting on the bay window with his legs crossed. Wang Meru was annoyed, hey, is the sun coming out from the west today? Zhang Shui had her hair loose, looked back at her, and gave a low, hmm, what's wrong? Wang Meru looked her up and down a few times, you're in a bad mood. No. Zhang Shui waved her hand, mom, you go out first, I have to change clothes. 
Wang Meru pursed her lips and gently closed the door, but turned her head and started talking to Jing Su. It's New Year's Eve, don't you care about your daughter? Why do you wake up so early? It looks like you've been bewitched. Jing Su washed the dishes and complained, you will scold her when she wakes up late, and you are not satisfied if she wakes up early. I think you are just looking for trouble. When she returns to Jiangqing to work the day after tomorrow, you can't think about it. While the couple were arguing, Jing Shui came out of the room. Although the sun came out today, it didn't heat up, especially when it was just dawn, and the green plants on the roadside were still covered with frost. Jing Shui rarely tied her hair into a ponytail today, wrapped in a scarf, didn't wear much makeup, only painted her eyebrows. She took her bag and walked straight to the door. Dad, Mom, I have something to do today, so don't wait for me for dinner tonight. At the same time as he finished speaking, there was a sound of closing the door. Wang Meru and Jing Su froze for a moment in the kitchen, looking at each other. It seems that I'm really in a bad mood. I can't feel it when I was born. M. Jing Shui took a taxi to the entrance of the aquarium. Last night, when the banquet asked her to be a landlord, the first place she thought of was Central Park. But then I thought about it, what park to visit in winter, and I mentioned the aquarium. Unexpectedly, in such a place, Shi Yan agreed without hesitation. The aquarium opens at 10 o'clock, and Jing Shui had a banquet at 10 o'clock last night, but she arrived at half past nine. Because last night, she hardly had a deep sleep. Even after a whole night of tossing and turning, she still hadn't figured out how to face Shi Yan. She didn't know if Qin Shiriwa had told Shi Yan about her. If so, why haven't the two of them moved yet? If not, no, sooner or later, they will say it, after all, they are relatives whose blood is thicker than water. Qin Shiriwe and Jing Shui's brief friendship couldn't contain the fire at all. The clouds dispersed, and the golden sun shone on the square at the entrance of the aquarium. It looked like it was a warm spring day, but in fact, the cold wind still shaved my face like a knife. Before I knew it, it was almost 10 o'clock. A lot of people have come to the entrance, some are queuing to buy tickets, some are buying street gadgets, but Shi Yan is nowhere to be seen. Jing Shui stood on tiptoe and stared at the entrance. The small banners in the distance fluttered in the wind, without stopping for a moment. The closer it was to 10 o'clock, the more panicked Jing Shui became. Sometimes the premonition comes without reason, but it quickly takes root and sprouts in my heart. For example, at this moment, she faintly felt that Shi Yan would not come. As soon as this idea came up, Jing Shui's heart seemed to be grabbed suddenly, hanging on his chest, blocking the passage of breathing. She rubbed her sleeves unconsciously with her fingers, but couldn't find a place to put them. Such waiting emotions slowly climbed in the body like vines, scratching people uncomfortable. After a while, Jing Shui turned around and went to the canteen to buy two bottles of mineral water, walked around a few times, and then continued to wait. Every second of these few minutes seems to be slowed down ten times, and every second is like suffering. When the wall clock in the center of the square pointed to ten o'clock, Jing Shui suddenly felt a sense of falling. Like sinking into the water, the waves are calm, but there is no point of focus, so I can only let myself sink a little bit. Cheerful music was played on the square, and groups of children jumped and ran in through the gate, bringing bursts of laughter. Jing Shui stared at the wall clock for a while, staring blankly at the wall. An old flower seller passed by her and accidentally bumped into her. Jing Shui suddenly came back to his senses, but as if he didn't know what to do, he moved two steps left and right, and finally stood back to his original position. Another twenty minutes passed. It seems like twenty years have passed. Several times, Jing Shui wanted to take out his phone and ask why Shi Yan hadn't come yet. But no matter if she felt guilty or guilty, she never took this step. Because she knew very well that Shi Yan would never be late for no reason. There must be a reason why he didn't come. Jing Shui just didn't want to admit it and didn't want to expose it with his own hands. After a while, she wrapped a scarf, held two bottles of mineral water, and stood on the steps next to the ticket window. There is a good line of sight, and you can have a panoramic view of the situation at the entrance. However, on the side of the square that she could not see, a car had been parked for a long time. Shi Yan realized it earlier than Jing Shu realized. Originally, after 8 o'clock in the morning, he and Qin Shiriwe had already set foot on their way home. But when the car was about to reach the intersection of the highway, Shi Yan suddenly ordered the driver to change the lane. He didn't know why he came, and he could just leave. But when he really came here, he couldn't find a reason to get out of the car. 
When I first arrived, there was no one here, and occasionally a few leaflets were blown by the wind in the empty square. Qin Shiriwa put down the co-pilot's seat and slept soundly under her coat. Shiryan sat quietly in the car until you saw Zheng Shui walking over under the sunlight. With a distance of tens of meters, Zheng Shui's ponytail swayed gently in the light. She was wearing jeans, white sneakers, and carrying a backpack, like a female college student, but Shiryan still recognized her at a glance. Watching her go to the machine to get the ticket, watching her standing quietly beside the green belt with her head down, kicking small stones with her feet from time to time, watching her take out her mobile phone several times, but finally put it in her bag inside. Sher Yen clasped his hands in front of his chest, just looking at her in the distance, calmly. At exactly 11 o'clock, the first show in the aquarium began, and the cheers and music in the venue almost overturned the roof. At this time, there was no one in the square. The busier it is inside, the colder it looks outside. Zheng Shui already had the answer in his heart, and he couldn't deceive himself and others when Shi Yen was late for an hour. She didn't take a sip of the two bottles of water. She hugged her chest and walked slowly towards the exit. But the moment she walked out of the gate, she still couldn't hold back and looked back at the wall clock on the square. What if that trace of luck thinner than hair stopped Zheng Shui's footsteps? She walked to the door and dialed Shi Yan's phone number. After a few rings, the phone was connected, but the person on the other side didn't speak, not even breathing. Zheng Shui was also silent for a while. The phone call was so quiet that Zheng Shui felt that there was no one on the other side. After a while, she asked cautiously, aren't you coming? The call seemed to freeze for a moment. Immediately afterwards, the other party's voice finally sounded. Shall I come to play with you? The mineral water in his arm suddenly fell to the ground and quickly rolled to the side of the road. Zheng Shui stood at the gate in a daze, feeling a chill all over his body, and even his fingertips were trembling slightly. And her throat seemed to be soaked in acid water, she wanted to speak, but was blocked by a choking feeling in her chest. A few seconds later, before she could say, I'm sorry, the busy signal rang on the phone. Chapter 43 The fifth day of the Lunar New Year is commonly known as the Pawu Festival. Worship the god of wealth and send off poor ghosts. Every family cooks dumplings and prepares for a good fortune. Zheng Shui's family is no exception. In the evening, Wang Meiru was chopping dumpling stuffing in the kitchen. The window of the kitchen was close to the window of Zheng Shui's room, and she deliberately used her strength so that Zheng Shui could hear her dissatisfaction. Boom boom. Boom. Wang Meiru held the handle of the knife and smashed it on the cutting board as if venting her anger. I'm in my twenties, and I only know how to sleep with my head covered. What's the difference with a pig? If you're older than the Chinese New Year, you'll sleep when you come back. I think it's going to grow on the bed. I don't know how to come out to help, I'm so lazy, I really don't know how she lives alone in Jiangqing. Jing Su rolled the dumpling wrapper, and said with a smile, the children and grandchildren have their own blessings, why are you worrying so much? Of course you don't worry about the meat that fell from your body. Wang Meiru snorted coldly, look at your daughter, she'd better have that blessing to be served by others in the future, otherwise she will starve to death sooner or later. After chanting a few words, she put down the kitchen knife and angrily pushed Zheng Shui's room away. It's time to eat. Do you want me to treat you? Zheng Shui poked his head out from under the quilt and let out a muffled O. Oh. After returning from the aquarium, she lied to her parents that she had eaten lunch, then locked herself in her room and fell into a dark sleep. As for why you sleep, Shi Yan's words, before hanging up the phone, like a knife, directly pierced through her last luck. The moment all the strings in the mind are broken, the collapse brought about is often only temporary. But the remaining emotions quietly spread in a silent place. Zheng Shui didn't know what happened to him. She can clearly feel that she should be uncomfortable at this moment, the shame of being exposed for a lie, and the self-blame of doing something wrong, they should all be there. But there was no outburst of emotion, not like the outright anger when he found out about Yu Xingzhou's betrayal. She couldn't even cry at all. Now I just feel that I can't breathe, like a patient with a bad cold, breathing becomes difficult, the chest is full of sour things, and I can't concentrate. Whenever you do something, your mind will wander. The way to escape this emotion is to sleep. She got into bed, wrapped herself tightly, and felt nothing when she fell asleep. But sleeping is often another vicious circle. Every time I wake up, I feel weak all over my body, and the dull mood in my heart has not improved, because of this. You can only continue to force yourself to fall into a deep sleep. 
But today's dinner couldn't be avoided, Xing Shui ate a few dumplings casually, and she went back to her room. I'm going out to play mahjong. Before leaving, Wang Meru pushed open the door of Xing Shui's room and took a look, and sure enough, she was sleeping again. I said you slept all day, do you want to be a sleep god? I watched the drama all night last night. Xing Shui's voice came out from under the quilt, leave me alone, I'll catch up on sleep. Of course I don't care about you. Wang Meru straightened her sleeves and pretended to say casually, tomorrow we have an appointment with our principal's wife to play mahjong and we will go to his house for dinner tonight. Would you like to come together? I haven't seen her in the past few days since I came back. What about you Yu? Xing Shui, no. Wang Meru muttered a few more words before going out. Originally, she didn't take Xing Shui's state seriously, thinking that young people are like this, they like to lie in bed and play with their mobile phones all day long. However, on the sixth day of the Lunar New Year, Xing Shui still slept all day, and she began to feel that something was wrong. On the morning of the seventh day, Xing Shui didn't come out for breakfast again. Wang Meru walked into her room and asked, aren't you packing your luggage? The high-speed rail ticket at three o'clock in the afternoon. There are not many things, I will collect them now. Xing Shui opened his eyes, sat up and put on his coat. Before getting out of bed, Wang Meru sat beside her bed. E, has something happened to you recently? Wang Meru leaned on the head of the bed, stretched out her hand to run along Xing Shui's hair, her voice suddenly became soft, is it not going well at work? Or did you encounter any other problems? After sleeping for two days, Xing Shui's head became heavy and his reaction became slow. It wasn't until Wang Meru's familiar smell enveloped her that she slowly recovered. However, the emotions in my heart have been accumulated for a long time, like sedimentation into sand and stones and they are heavily pressed in the chest cavity, and it is difficult to find another outlet. Xing Shui leaned quietly in Wang Meru's arms, her nose was sore, her throat was choked, but she didn't speak. Some emotions are no longer suitable for showing to parents. There are only Wang Meru's soft words in his ears. If things don't go your way, you can always find a solution. If it doesn't work, let your father teach you. He hasn't encountered any difficulties in his life. If you can't take it anymore, go home. We won't stay in the big city anymore. Qing'an has beautiful mountains and rivers. Your parents will buy you a new house and a new car. You can still live comfortably. If you encounter emotional problems, just grit your teeth and let it pass. You are still young and you will meet many people. There is nothing you must do. But when you get older and have children at home, and then look back at the things that you thought would be unforgettable in the past, in fact, you will forget them after a long time, and the time limit for not getting an eyebrow tattoo lasts for a long time. After a long time, Xing Shui choked up and said, Mom, I did something wrong. If you make a mistake, you are wrong. Who didn't make mistakes when they were young? Just don't make mistakes in the future. There is no future. There is no future, time is hope, and there is still hope for everything. Xing Shui didn't speak anymore. Her mother wouldn't understand, and she couldn't even understand why there was an empty feeling in her heart that couldn't be filled. After a long time, is it better? Wang Meru patted her on the back, get up when you feel better, forward the voting link of Qing'an No. 1 Middle School's most popular teacher to your circle of friends, and ask your friends to vote for me. When Yen saw this circle of friends, he was sitting in Guanji's office. Guanji frowned, staring at the company's real-time data monitoring. The screen was filled with green, watching Guanji's heartache. The stock market is ruthless, really ruthless, even more ruthless than women. When Shi Yen heard this, he turned his phone on the table, leaned on the armrest of the chair with his elbows, and looked out the window. It's pretty ruthless. Still a heartless one. In the evening, Xing Shui returned to Jiangqing. As soon as he packed his luggage, he immediately cleaned up and down the house, and washed all the spring clothes. In the end, he couldn't find anything to do, and even wanted to remove the curtains and wash them again. But Kong Nan suddenly called and asked her to help proofread a manuscript, which saved the bad luck of the curtain being destroyed. After reading the manuscript, it was already two o'clock in the night. After a day of tossing, Xing Shui fell asleep. At daybreak, I put a badge on my neck and walk into the office building. Work is the most important thing, and I have to give way to all emotions. On the first day after the spring festival, when returning to work, most people don't feel nervous. 
The first thing they do when they arrive at the company in the morning is to exchange the special products they brought back. A girl in the next door group walked past Xing Shui with a pile of food and drink in her arms and asked, Shui, what specialties do you guys have from Qingyan? What did you bring back? After two days of being in a daze, Xing Shui didn't remember what special products he brought. She looked up from the computer and said with a smile, We Qing in specialty beauties, do you want me? Hiss, how shameless. The girl dropped a bag of tea leaves and left. Xing Shui suppressed her smile, stared downcast for a while, then continued to sort out the emails with her head down. Busy work is like a wave, enveloping Xing Shui, ups and downs into everyone's rhythm. There is no room to show private emotions. At 10 o'clock, Qin Shiriwe came. As soon as Jing Shui saw her, he suddenly breathed a sigh of relief and kept his eyes on her. Until she walked in front of her, Jing Shui was inexplicably flustered and stood up straight away. However, Qin Shiriwe hadn't uttered the words that were brewing, but Qin Shiriwe suddenly said, Sister Shui, I'm resigning. Jing Shui's expression suddenly froze, What? Qin Shiriwe repeated again, I'm here to resign. Seeing Jing Shui's injured look in shock, Qin Shiriwe rubbed her chin embarrassedly, I'm not in good health recently, I have to go home to take care of myself. Jing Shui could tell that this was an excuse, she was stunned for a moment, and then nodded, then you should have a good rest. Well, I'll go talk to the editor-in-chief. Qin Shiriwe had just left when she was stopped by Jing Shui. She turned around and asked, what's wrong? Jing Shui hesitated for a long time, not knowing how to speak. After waiting for a while, Qin Shiriwe's eyes became more and more puzzled, and Jing Shui said, Your uncle, has he also agreed to resign? Thinking of Shiryen, Qin Shiriwe also felt that he was very strange recently, as if he didn't care about her at all, but she still wanted to speak well of him in front of Jing Shui. Of course I agree. My little uncle is still very considerate. Knowing that I am not in good health, he offered to resign and go home to recuperate. Jing Shui nodded and reached out to hug her, his voice hoarse. Goodbye, Xiaoya, take good care of your illness and stay healthy. I'll see you for sure. I'm not a big problem. I'll recover soon. Qin Shiriwe thought to herself, when I come back from playing around, I will definitely invite you to have afternoon tea. Time passed unhurriedly, and after three or four days passed, everyone calmed down from the aftertaste of the holiday and devoted themselves to busy work. It doesn't make any difference if Qin Shiriwe is missing from the finance team. Her desk has already been unknowingly piled up with various sundries. Jing Shui has interviews every day and usually rushes to the office in the morning, rushes back to the company to write a manuscript in the afternoon, and does not leave the office building until late at night. No one noticed her occasional emotional changes, only felt that in the new year, her workload was greater than before. Probably the deputy editor-in-chief had just resigned, and she was bound to win that position. On Friday morning, Jing Shui received a call from Chiao Fu's assistant in a hurry. An interview originally scheduled for next week, due to Chiao Fu's job change, asked her if she could advance to today. Jing Shui originally had a few manuscripts to verify today, but she still agreed. After lunch, Jing Shui immediately rushed to Mingyu Yunchuang. The 8th to 12th floors of the Mingyu Yunchuang office building are all executive offices, and the space utilization rate is very low. Often there are only two main offices on the first floor, and the rest are conference rooms. Therefore, in addition to being quieter than the public office area, there is no overly busy atmosphere. However, Jing Shui was standing in the reception area on the eighth floor, but he felt the atmosphere was extremely heavy. She even felt that every employee here was holding their breath, not daring to breathe. When she came here before, occasionally a female employee with a familiar face would greet her with a smile, but today everyone is doing their own things without squinting, without any distraction. Jing Shui felt that there was nothing wrong, not only today, but since the day when work resumed after the festival, the employees in these high-level office areas have discovered that Shi Yan has a particularly bad temper recently and they often directly scold people in meetings. Even in the face of some executives who are much older than him, they don't give face at all, and they are red-faced. As an employee at the bottom, he dared not show his arrogance, but whenever he had to contact Shi Yan, he was extremely careful, for fear of making a mistake. Qin Leji, the CFO secretary, who is usually the safest, seemed to react the most. When he saw Shi Yan, he was out of shape and in a daze. Once when he went to a meeting with Chiu Fu, he even misplaced the PPT. 
Sure Yan didn't say anything at that time, but just took off his glasses and put them on the table, folded his arms and looked at Chiu Fu calmly. Chiu Fu's heart sank, and he immediately asked Qin Leji to leave the office. And she hasn't come to work yet. People are easily affected by the atmosphere, and Jing Shui became more nervous when he was in it. It's just that the reason for her nervousness is different from these employees. Ever since she was preparing to come here, she had been holding a faint expectation in her heart. Maybe, maybe, we can see Shi Yan today. Although she didn't know why she wanted to see him at this time, and she didn't know what to say or what to do when she saw him, but her heart was driving her for no reason, so that she was a little restless. After waiting for nearly an hour, the small LED screen in the meeting room directly opposite finally went out. Immediately afterwards, the door opened automatically, and a group of people in formal attire came out one after another. The leader is naturally Shi Yan. Beside him are Chen Xing and Chiu Fu. Chiu Fu held the tablet in his hand, and Shi Yan tilted his head slightly to listen to him. Zhang Shui saw him at first sight and subconsciously stood up, holding the strap of the shoulder bag with both hands, but hesitated on the spot and couldn't move forward. Until Chiu Fu caught a glimpse of Zhang Shui from the corner of his eye, he paused and then whispered in Shi Yan's ear, Miss Xing is here. So, Zhang Shui saw Shi Yan raised his head, his gaze swept across her face, and then, he looked back and kept walking. He walked straight past Jing Shui. As if he didn't see her, his expression didn't even fluctuate for a moment. All Jing Shui's throbbing stopped abruptly at this moment. She was still staring blankly at the front, even though the footsteps behind her had gradually drifted away. One second, two seconds, three seconds. After an unknown amount of time, Jing Shui turned around mechanically, and the elevator at the end of the aisle had slowly climbed to the twelfth floor. Standing there for a long time, Zheng Shui's eyes were a little sore. She walked to the corner with her head down, took out her mobile phone, and opened Shi Yan's chat box. I have a lot of drafts in my heart, but my usual smooth and smooth writing style can't organize a complete sentence. She found that she had nothing to justify, and there was no room for excuse. After deleting the content in the dialogue box word by word, she only edited three words. Sorry, it seemed like she had nothing else to say except this one. However, the moment she pressed the send button, the last hope in her heart collapsed. A red exclamation mark appeared on the screen. Your message has been sent, but it was rejected by the other party. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to our channel for more captivating illustrated romance audiobooks. Don't miss out on our latest releases and be part of our growing community. Hit that subscribe button and embark on an enchanting journey with us.